Howdy y'all, this is Chet, AKA Billboard. Welcome to my channel, Billboard's Bill. This should be a short video. Uh, this is an answer to Jason's community question. Jason at the Blue Ox Model Shop about uh, model building and health and mental health. Um, I'm not one that usually uh, talks about my uh, personal life. <laughs> um, but, well, let's see. L let me just start. Um, when I was a kid, into my teens, I used to build car models. I was did not do a good job at it back then. The, uh, the resources wasn't like they are now. Um, uh, you had the uh, squeeze tube of red testers glue that smelled like oranges and uh, give you a headache after a while. Uh, that glue would get everywhere. You had uh, testers enamel paint. Uh, you know, and then my teens came along. And I didn't really build models as much. Uh, the last model I had tried building was in my 20s. The only reason I remember that is because I had a uh, brand new Snap-on uh, toolbox. I think it was a Harley-Davidson 95th anniversary. It had a Sprinter Softail on the front of it. It was like a maroon-colored box with black. Um, and I had spray-painted a Jungle Gym 1 16th scale model kit. And I had that sitting on top of the toolbox uh, to dry. But I never finished the model. I don't know whatever happened to the model. I don't even know how far I got into it. Maybe just painting the body. I think I painted the body. Anyway, um, so then uh, I grew up in New Jersey. I um, worked for a, uh, a chemical transport company. It also had a fuel division. I was a mechanic, uh, trucks and trailers, and then I became the parts manager. Then I moved on to another company uh, six years later that I worked for for six years in New Jersey, a competitor as the parts manager. Uh, I went to one more company for a couple months and then I moved up, uh, my, met my wife in 99 and I moved up to New England in 2000. She's from New England. Um, I got a job at a tank trailer dealership up here in, in Massachusetts. And I was a parts manager there for 20-something years. Um, I'm 57 now. In, uh, everyone knows 2020 we had the COVID scare, the scandemic. And uh, I had COVID at the end of the towards the end of the year it was just a it was just a bad cough for a few weeks it cleared up um this is just just a little side note how how they didn't know what the heck they were doing when i was tested positive i spoke with the board of health up here in massachusetts and they said to me they asked me about my symptoms and this and that did i ever lose uh uh smell all this stuff i said no i had a bad cough that uh, went away eventually with over-the-counter medicine. Um, they said, you know, you're supposed to quarantine for two weeks after you test positive. Uh, so she told me I can intermittently quarantine, which I had no idea what that was. Uh, but it was, I could go to work, which is where I actually see people, and then quarantine when I came home. I talked to my boss and I, I stayed home for the two weeks. He thought we had a test negative to come back, but they, they just had you yeah, quarantined for two weeks. Then you can return to work. And uh, in 2021, um, I ended up with a ulcer on my heel. It was a deep, big ulcer. I, I thought it was just a dry, cracked heel. I saw my vascular doctor. And I, while well, he, I had a ulcer on the back of my leg that was weeping. And while he was taking care of that, I mentioned the crack on my heel. He took a look at it. He says, it's an ulcer. And he's looking at it and he's like, he, I think he debrided it a little bit, but he wasn't really, and he packed it, but he wasn't, he was a little concerned with it because of how 
big it was. It, uh, so he, uh, that's my dog in the background, Lexi. Uh, so he sent me to a podiatrist. I went to the podiatrist and I would see him every week and then eventually every other week. Um, he would debreed the thing and he would take care of it. And he every week, every time I saw him, he would say, it's looking better, it's looking better, it's getting better. But when these things turn, they turn fast and get really bad. So this is going on for a few months. Going there, it's getting better, getting better, getting better. May of that year, I ended up coming home from work because I, I was feeling feverish. I called my doctor. They prescribed me antibiotics. I went home. For an entire week, every afternoon, I would get high fevers and chills. But they would go away just as quick, and I wouldn't have them again until the same time the next day. What, uh, I think it was a Friday night. I was walking from the bathroom to the bedroom, and I heard a loud... Well, it wasn't loud, but I heard an audible, like, pop, and my foot started hurting. So I was limping around. I, was, I ended up limping around using a cane and using a walker. Um, I had a doctor's appointment with my vascular doctor on the Monday. I went there, Monday or Tuesday. I went there. I saw him. He says, your foot is getting infected. You should go to the ER. Um... When do you see uh, the podiatrist again? I said, oh, I see him on Thursday. I have an appointment with him on Thursday. He goes, well, let me try calling him and see what he wants to do. Otherwise, you go and keep that appointment. So he goes, so he came back into the room and says, you keep that appointment on Thursday. I went to the doctor's office. I was in the waiting room. He comes out to take one look at me. He looked at my foot. He goes, go across and check into the ER. I was across the street from uh, Rhode Island Hospital. So I go to the ER and I spent the uh, hours in the ER. Uh, put me on or on uh, antibiotics and, and whatnot. Uh, so that night they took me from the ER and brought me for emergency surgery. I was, I, they knocked me out, did surgery on my foot um, in, uh, recovery, my doctor came up to me and said, he, who happened to be on call that night, came up to me and said, he thinks he got all the infection out. Um, and whatever. So I was sent to the acute ER, whatever it was called, it, uh, the acute, um, intensive care. It wasn't the regular intensive care. It was the real acute one. Evidently, my wife told me that while I was in surgery, I went into septic shock, which I didn't know. Uh, I, that was Thursday night. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I kept spiking fevers. Monday, they're telling me, oh, yeah, you're, you can't eat because you're going for surgery. Monday night, they did a second surgery on my foot. And... Um, it coming to in recovery, my doctor said to me, you, uh, by this weekend, you're going to have a below the knee amputation. Uh, there was just so much infection. He, he, and the, the pop I heard was my, uh, heel bone. I have, I had osteomyelitis. The infection got into the heel bone and it, the, what I heard was the heel bone shattering and he cleaned all that out. So, I had a whole week, a lot of prayer, um, and every day they would come and change the dressing on my foot, and I could hear the, the resident doctors all talking amongst themselves, and uh, they're checking my pulse on my foot, they're checking, uh, seeing if I could wiggle my toes, this and that, um, they kept changing the dressing. My whole heel was sliced open. It was a big flap. I had a hole on the side of my foot, a hole on top of my foot. Um, so come, I think it was Thursday or Friday, my wife was in the room 
and my vascular doctor came in. And uh, I said, okay, what's up? When's the surgery? He said, well, I want to see some things myself. I want to hold reserve judgment. You're still pretty young. Um, we don't want to amputate you if we don't have to. And uh, so he's, he looked at my foot myself, himself. And he wanted to try something. He said, if this works, great. If it doesn't work, then you know what the alternative is. So he put a wound vac on my foot. And every day they would change it, run the wound vac. They would change the dressings. And this went on for a while. Uh, but every time they were doing it, they were telling me how impressed they were with how quickly I was regenerating tissue. I, I mean... Me, one time I looked over and I could see what I thought were the bones, but it was the tendons in my foot. And you shouldn't be able to see your tendons. So they had every time they went to do anything with my foot, they, I, they had to uh, give me uh, one or two, one of two different painkillers they gave me. Uh, I can't think of what they were at the moment. I was, and I, I tried refusing them because I, uh, and they're like, you're going to want them. I was like, I don't want to be addicted. But anyway, so I spent, between the hospital and rehab, I spent two months in a hospital. One month in the hospital, one month at rehab. When I left rehab, I was hopping around on one foot, but I still had my left foot. It was kind of twi it's kind of twisted to the right, or very much twisted to the right, but I still have my foot. Um... After being home for a few months, once the wounds were healing, all all pretty much healed. Um, I don't think they were fully healed yet, but they were no longer needed any wound vax or anything. The uh, uh, home nurse didn't come anymore. The home PT stopped coming. Uh, at that point, I went to an orthopedic place. And they designed a big giant plastic uh, boot to hold my, to, so I can be able to walk. I still use a cane or a walker, mostly a walker. But I was able to get around without hopping because with the boot. Um, so that was in 2021. I am, uh, because of the deformity of my foot now... They have me as disabled. Uh, well, back up a little bit. I am, they do have me listed as a type 2 diabetic. I have high blood sugar. Um, so I, I finally go on an endocrinologist and it's, it's getting much better. But between the high blood sugar and that, I do get um, infections in my leg, uh, skin infections, but I got that long before I ever had the problem with the foot. Um, I get skin infections and, but through modeling, through building, uh, well, actually, uh, before that I started taking up drawing, which I never did before in my life. And I did some really nice drawings. And then from there I tried my hand at painting and then I made some stuff with, uh, painting and uh, resin cat uh, resin. So I would I I got these wooden hearts and I paint like a beach scene and I put real sand at the bottom with seashells and starfish and then I cover the whole thing in resin. Um, I thought I thought that would give me something to do and I'd be able to sell them and earn some money because you don't make, you don't get much from disability. Um, I I didn't sell any but I did give one away to my uh oldest son and his wife for christmas with with some coasters and uh, something else i made for them um so back to the year of covid auto world had a and i remember when i was a kid auto world was a mail order catalog of slot cars models and stuff like that with tips and tricks and and all kinds of stuff you can buy to to make your car your models look more uh realistic spark plug wires braided hoses all that stuff long before i think it was before protech but 
that's auto that's the auto world i remembered and and during covid i was the year before covid my mother-in-law passed away and we ended up with having two houses we were living in one and and when covid came my wife works in healthcare so she moved here to the house we're in now which was my mother-in-law's house and i was still at the other house um because she was worried about me getting covid and uh eventually i moved here but i was i was looking up auto world for some reason and then i saw they had a website and i was looking at it and they had a deal going on if you bought one model you got one for free so i ordered them it one was a a pair of uh vietnam era jet planes and the other was i bought the tom McEwen polar lights funny car very hard kit to put together very fiddly and the instructions are not all that good but i i last year i built i worked on that kit and i built it and it's about 90 percent done i painted the body it came out nice until i clear coated and the peel, paint peeled and i stripped the paint and i pre-primed it but i haven't finished it but uh the whole time i've been since 2021 i started watching a lot of youtube videos started off watching don yost and then i found lucas c's channel and this one and that one and i was watching them and in the early 2000s i went to school for video and radio production and never did anything with it so i was like well i could probably make a make youtube videos <laughs> so i started making these videos i promise i'm gonna get better but um i still don't have enough confidence to videotape myself actually working on the model uh, so that's why my videos are mostly showing what i have done and and talking about what i've done um so anyway If I didn't have hobbies to rely on, I think I would go nuts and just spend the whole time just laying in bed with my foot in the air watching TV and stuff. It's, uh, in a way, I, I believe uh, it's the models, that model building that's uh, that keeps me somewhat sane. I, uh, or actually it gives me something to do. Um, but I can only do it for so long a day because, uh, my foot, my leg gets swollen and I have to put it up. So I work on the stuff when I can. I have not done any videos, worked on any of my three group builds I'm currently in right now for over two weeks. And that is because I'm dealing with a cellulitis infection in my leg. I'm on antibiotics. It's been over two weeks. Uh, the swelling's gone away. The redness is pretty much going away. The only thing that's left is some pain in the back of my leg. Once I can get that under control, I'll get back to building models and shooting videos. Um, I just wanted to give this, uh, make this video to, to give my answer to the community question. Yes, I think, uh, ho hobbies in general is good um, for mental health, for health, uh, therapy. I think the therapeutical, therapeutical, yeah, wh whatever. Uh, I uh, it also get it also makes your brain think. Um, if I didn't have hobbies, like I said, for most of the day, I'd probably just lay around watching TV which is what I've been doing for the past two weeks because of the infection. Um, I hope this answered the question. Um, keep modeling. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up and, and like this channel. And uh, that's, that's my story. Uh, have a good day and a better tomorrow. I'm out. Bye.